This is Justin Case of American Newscape joining our friend Jarrett Rogers. Jarrett is with and based in the Phoenix National Weather Service Center. He will be sharing perspectives on weather, dangers of, and the simple power of it all. Hello, Jarrett. Welcome to American Newscape. Hi, thanks for having me on. Hey, we're excited. Let's get right after this. What does the National Weather Service do and how does it serve our region? Well, the National Weather Service, uh, their mission is to protect life and property across the entire United States, um, as well as, you know, parts outside of the United States, which is uh, territories like Guam, Puerto Rico, et cetera. Um, so for Yuma, uh, we actually issue watches, warnings, forecasts, 24-7, uh, 365 uh, for Yuma, Southeast California, Southwest Arizona, even all the way from Phoenix. Uh, so we really have a large area of responsibility that we're watching all the time well I, I know lots of people are dependent on that weather data you guys provide whether it's utility companies for manpower farmers for crop rotation you know getting into the fields getting out of the fields but other than that what are some of the most dangerous weather hazards we're likely to experience in this part of the world yeah a lot of uh, people think of arizona uh, southeast california as the quiet part of the world weather-wise and in some ways it is you know it's a lot of sunshine um but really there's still a lot of dangerous weather heads that you have to pay attention to number one would be the heat uh the heat season of course lasts over six months a year where you can have temperatures above 100 degrees uh, often 110 degrees or warmer like we're seeing uh this june so the heat is, is always a, a danger to residents, um, even people who don't feel like they're vulnerable. If you're outside or the power goes off or you're just caught on the road or something like that, it can be very dangerous. Other than the heat, um, we warn for flash flooding, severe thunderstorms, uh, dust storms, tornadoes. Uh, tornadoes, of course, are very rare, but occasionally they do happen. Uh, but really, dust storms are, are the most frequent uh, hazard I think that we encounter and severe thunderstorms on occasion during the monsoon as well. So we try to get the, the warning out there. We try to get people a heads up before those happen and uh, certainly are, are watching you know, the sky and watching all of our tools such as radar uh, all the time for these things to develop. You know, I remember we moved to Phoenix in the late 60s at, and I was a child, fortunately, and the first thing we were warned about were those brown that brown wall that was rising in the sky and uh we were told to get to the next house and get inside and those 60s dust storms were unbelievable so the power of it and the dangers of it are reality so okay but for us for us uh just peons in the public how can we stay informed and receive information from the national weather service yeah, the National Weather Service plays uh, one role, a big role, in keeping the public informed about uh, weather hazards. Um, we, you know, put out web uh, forecasts on our website. Um, we have a NOAA weather radio, which is kind of an older technology, but it's still uh, running in the coverage area. It's pretty good across Yuma and areas outside of Yuma as well. Um, of course, we have a huge web presence, uh, social media presence as well. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook to get up to date information. Uh, we now have our uh, certain types of warnings go directly to your cell phone. Uh, so if we're issuing a dust storm warning or a flash flood warning, a tornado warning, you're going to get that on your cell phone if you're within that warning area. Um, so really, you know, that's the way we reach out directly to our uh, to the public and to our users. Um, but we work pretty closely as well with the broadcast media, the print media. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of... Uh, Part of a bigger weather enterprise, I would say. So we, we work together all as one to make sure that the public stays informed. Well, and I would recommend to anybody if you have a weather application on your phone, once you look at the NOAA National Weather Service app, <laughs> it puts the rest of them to shame. So, all right. How can I get involved with the National Weather Service activities? Yeah, so one of the uh, the main functions of the Weather Service is to interact with the public and, and provide services, of course, to the public. Um, we offer something that's called uh, the Skywarn Storm Spotter Program. So what that is, is we actually uh, use volunteers uh, from around, you know, the city of Yuma, around the state of Arizona, California, and anybody really in the United States has signed up to be one of their local weather service offices uh, to provide storm reports to the National Weather Service. So we call you 
uh, one of our storm spotters. Um, what that means is that we may turn to you uh, for storm reports, or you may call us if you witness something. Um, so we ha that involves a training uh, once every couple of years. It's the renewal cycle for that. It's completely free. It takes just a couple hours of your time for each training session to get renewed. Um, and again, it's completely voluntary. Uh, but we have you know hundreds of storm spotters across Arizona and Southern California that, that certainly help us out. Um, other than that, we're pretty active with the public. Uh, we do a lot of outreach type events. Um, you know, back before. Uh, the pandemic had, of course, there were a lot more of those, but, um, you know, public safety fairs, uh, we work pretty closely with the local fire departments, police departments, emergency managers. So uh, for any of those types of events, you might see us. And we also do a lot of behind the scenes uh, work as well for uh, you know, bigger, bigger events like air shows, um, sometimes even sporting events and things like that. But yeah, the Storm Spotter program is the number one way to get involved. If you have an organization, um, say you're with a, a city or business even uh, you can sign up to be a weather ready uh, weather ready nation ambassador I and mean, you can find that on the internet it takes about two minutes to fill out an application and it officially acknowledges a relationship with the weather service it's a one-time thing i certainly would recommend that uh, folks sign up for that if they're interested well i think our audience will be interested in that jared um and i would encourage them to you know at least look into those uh, resources and consider joining such things well, Jared, are there any closing thoughts other than it's going to be 120 degrees sometime this week that you want to leave us with? Yeah, it's going to be hot for a while. Um, not a bold prediction there, but <laughs> as we had into the monsoon, uh, you know, things change quickly, even in the quieter parts of the world uh, where thunderstorms aren't common, but all it takes is one big event. You know, one thunderstorm can produce two or three inches of rain in the hour and cause significant flooding. So you have to be on your toes uh, throughout the monsoon, especially July and August, uh, you know, around the Yuma area in Southern California, uh, that's that tends to be one of those peaks. So, yeah, just stay informed. Uh, reach out to the Weather Service, you know, via social media or just follow us online. Uh, you know, any way you can get weather information, uh, just to make sure you're staying weather uh, aware all the time. Okay. Well. Well, Jared, thank you. This has been Justin Case and Jared Rogers providing a few perspectives on weather. Thanks for joining us. Remember, additional information and links are provided in this video's read more. Please be sure to subscribe to this channel to stay connected and please connect with the National Weather Service in the links below so you can join us all at the cool kids table.